If you've ever thought about getting a wood hood, let's talk about some of the things that you need to consider when planning for a wood hood. Okay, so I have worked in the industry, it's been 30 years now, and um, I've seen the, the uh, evolution from um, regular, let's say, un under cabinet, um, basically thin line basic hoods that produce very little um, you know, functionality to um, large commercial style uh, canopy or chimney hoods. And now uh, at wood hoods, uh, bringing another element of that over the last, say, mostly maybe 10 to 12 years. They've been around a long time, but um, they've really taken um, commonplace in, in kitchens the last decade or so. The design um, aspects of planning for wood, wood hood. Well, a couple of things. Number one, of course, you're going to be looking at whether or not you're going to be matching the cabinets that you've got next to it. You know, in this particular um, um, kitchen, we've got, you know, walnut. Um, wall cabinets with a, a lime green or a light kind of sage green, I should say, painted hood. When you are planning for a, a wood hood, you typically want your wood hood to be um, sizably wider than the cooking surface. So for instance, this is a 36 inch range top um, and this is a 48 inch um, wood hood. Now, some of these companies, when they give you the size, they give you the size of the actual wood hood, you know, um, let's say carcass or shell uh, of the hood, they do not uh, count the extended molding that goes past that. So those are some factors to consider. Make sure you pay attention to those. I found a lot of companies do not identify that portion on the specs and that could hurt you because you end up having to either order a new wood hood or change your wall cabinets next to it if you don't have enough breathing room in between those. Okay. Uh, the other thing is height. Now I've purposefully <laughs> design, uh, put this hood lower to demonstrate one of my biggest pet peeves. Now this is just temporary. I'm going to eventually have these, this adjusted, but for the purpose of this video, I wanted to show you that I'm six foot one, six foot two in that range. I recommend to have them set at six feet. Um, the bottom of the uh, bottom alignment is what we call it. Okay. The bottom of the wood hood, six foot. Um, on the code side of things, just so that you're aware, um, most places that you're going to build a home or remodel is going to be in a, um, an incorporated area, a, a city or county where there are building codes to follow. And most of those um, entities follow the International Building Code. By the way, the International Building Code pretty much says follow the recommendations of the manufacturer of the cooking appliance for how high the, the ventilation should be above the cooking surface. I'll just give you a, a spoiler alert. Um, most time, if you look in your booklets of your ranges, it's going to say um, around about 30 inches. Now, there are just some variables to those. Um, and a lot of that stuff is also affected by the performance of the, of the hood itself or the ventilation itself. So comparing this to, say, a chimney hood or an under cabinet hood, like a canopy hood um, from a, a manufacturer, say, that you're matching with on the, the cooking surface, um, you know, you might be paying, so, you know, say, $1,200 to $2,500 for a, an appliance hood. Um, if you're gonna go for a decorative wood hood like this, you know, I would anticipate a minimum of about $2,500, um, but you could be getting up to, to the $10,000 range depending on you know, how you make it and how, how uh, exquisite it is. You know, if you're looking to do a, a stone covered hood or a, a plastered hood, um, you know, all those, there's so many variables involved. But anyway, I would say that you know, your, your probably most common range is probably between three to $5,000 for a wood hood. Wood hoods do not come with the, the lighting, the, 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 the scroll cages or the, uh, the baffles, the, you know, the controls, um, the ventilation itself, that's all what's called an insert. An insert um, has all those controls um, and sometimes has the fans included in it. That's called an internal blower on ventilation. Um, if you, uh, those are easier to put in. Um, you have to make sure that the sizing fits. Oftentimes you have, uh, have to have a, um, uh, I just forgot what the name of it is anyway, an insert that you put in here that kind of fills in the blanks between how big that insert is and the actual wood hood cavity. Um, but then that insert goes in there, you connect it to your ducting and it takes your, your grease and smell and smoke outdoors. Okay. Well, yeah, preferably outdoors, um, that according to code. There's one other option for you though. It's a little more expensive, but it's a way more efficient or high performance ventilation option. There's two actually. There's an internal, I'm sorry, there's an inline blower and there's also an external blower, okay? Or an exterior blower, as some people refer to it as. 
the inline blower, they'll, in your ducting, put a fan somewhere between the hood and the exterior exit from your home. A lot, a lot of times that's in an attic, okay? Um, those also are quieter and higher performance than an internal blower, um, uh, but not as common. And in some markets, it does not meet code because they're concerned about um, possible fire up in the attic. Um, just because, you know, the grease and all that other stuff in ventilation is one of the, th the primary things that causes um, fires at some point. If you do an external blower where the blower itself, <coughs> excuse me, is put on the outside of the building, and then it's basically pulling the air from the hood. So when you turn these on with an external blower, you turn on your, your fan, you'll hear more like a sucking noise than you will hear like a, the fan itself, okay? Um, but they're usually gonna perform, I mean, you might be getting a, a 500 to 800 CFM blower on an internal blower, but you're looking at probably anywhere from 1,000 to to, I don't know, 1800 CFMs, cubic feet per minute, to have a blower on the outside of your house. Um, and so the performance is much, um, much better. Uh, but you have to consider sometimes the only access that you might have may, might be out by a deck where you might want to entertain or sit or relax. And if you've got to listen to that fan, that might be annoying. So you have to plan these out with, um, you know, and I always recommend use another party involved so that as you're emotionally involved in your project, whether you have a designer, contractor, architect, um, you know, even, even just in a good appliance uh, salesperson can help you think through these factors um, so that you're making sure that you're thinking that through, or even the cabinet shop. That's one of the challenges, <clears throat> excuse me, on a wood hood is oftentimes I've found the cabinet shop doesn't think too much about the insert. The appliance company doesn't think too much about the wood hood. So sometimes if you can find somebody, a designer, or somebody who's very well versed in this space, then they can help you make sure you plan well, okay? Um, so I hope that helps um, with your consideration of wood hoods. Have fun planning.